After finding success overseas in the spaghetti western scene, Clint Eastwood aspired for more. He wanted to direct. Years of being on sets taught Eastwood the difference between a good director and a bad director. He just needed a good script. He finally landed on Play Misty for Me, a thrilling tale about a DJ that has his life turned upside down when a one night stand turns out to be an obsessed fan. Welcome to 2024 season of Spooky of the Week. It's time for Spooky of the Week! Hey, do we have a pumpkin? Or... No. Ooh, we have nothing spooky? No, because we're filming this so early in October. You know, this is dropping October whatever the first weekend of October We filmed is. these the day before they release. Yeah, and because of that, when I went to the spooky store, they hadn't even stocked any of the spooky pumpkins yet. Welcome back, everybody. We are back. We are going to be talking about, this is our favorite yearly tradition. We come back to it spooky every single year. The last couple years, every uh, Spooky of the Week season, we have been doing themes. So the first time we did it, this couple years ago, Keegan gave us found footage horror movies. That was our theme. And then last year, Kevin's theme was horror Christmas movies. This year, Sam Slade forsake us and gave us the 1970s. So Sam Slade, what 70s are 70s horror. It was my pick this year. Well, I oh, so horror was part of yeah, the theme. So we, so we have proof that he, we have, oh, it's all, it's all It camera. wasn't just movies that came out in the 70s that Sam Slade wanted to watch. <laughs> if you remember last year, when Kevin picked Christmas horror, yes. I just went to Google and said Christmas horror. Yeah. Did the same thing this year. And Play Misty for me was in Google's list of Google lies. Did you scroll down to the thousands? No, it was like it was like within the top fifteen, <laughs> no, dude. No, top fifteen. You're gonna say top. I would 15. say uh, not the thousands, like Kevin said. Did you search top 1970s Clint Eastwood horror? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the theme is 70s horror, which I think is my favorite type of horror, is like all the movies that came out in the 70s that were horror movies. Like, that's my favorite vibe. And we covered- Especially the really boring ones. I like those yeah. ones a lot. We've covered some of them on previous Spooky of the Week episodes, yes. and we've really enjoyed a lot of the ones we've It's a very broad watched. theme, I would say. A lot of opportunity for people to pick really good movies, even though none of us did. Boring 70s movies are the best kind of boring movies there are. Yeah. Like there's they, a they texture to them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's lots of. I feel like as a decade, it was a very pessimistic decade. So like yeah. even in the movies, they're supposed to be like kind of campy or, or or low budget or cheesy. <laughs> a lot of them have a very like negative outlook on the world. By they're the all end very of the confident film. too. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. in the in their direction and their new take. Hollywood was changing from like like well you have to do it a certain way and it's got to be kind of nice you can't show this and that on screen but then it was like no we can do whatever we want. Well yeah. And, yeah. and the nice thing with nineteen seventies is they also get really experimental they try really weird and just out their ideas and they commit fully to yeah. them like you can yeah, just they, do yeah, whatever just do you it. want with a cat you, yeah yeah whatever you want with a cat yeah <laughs> I picked Clint Eastwood's directorial debut play Misty for me. which was marketed as a horror movie it was not watch the trailer. Play Misty for me. For Clint Eastwood, an invitation to terror. So you had seen this movie before. I saw this movie probably, it's been a long time. I barely remember anything about it. I saw it probably- So like three weeks before? No. Uh, so I picked this movie for a couple reasons. One, I was bouncing between like good movies and I was kind of like, every good movie I kept picturing their video and I was like, that's just where it's gonna be like, yeah, it was good. Yeah, so much damning evidence. <laughs> I was bouncing back and forth between these good movies. Um, yeah, I hate talking about well, Alien. I hate it. I hate talking about it. 70s horror. Seven, the theme was 70s horror. 70s horror, 70s, yeah, horror. 70s horror. I really wanted to pick a really 70s movie, like the one that like is in my head, like, like the, the vibe. Yeah, I almost picked The Brood. I almost picked Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which probably gave me my love for 70s horror movies. Yeah, that's a That was classic. like one of the first yeah. horror movies I ever watched, but I was like, there's no movie yet in Spooky of the Week history that only I like. <laughs> And then you guys will have to suffer through it. I hate you so much. If you picked the brood, you would have liked the brood the most easily. No, no, I know, but then you guys <laughs> also like the brood. You. It's almost always me watching I, movies I don't like. I, I wanna, and now you all have to watch a movie you don't like that I like. Sam Slate's finally getting his goddamn revenge. The most terrifying words you'll ever hear. Play Misty for me. The screen's most frightening plunge into terror. Just hope we're lucky enough to grab her the next time she tries it. Tries what? To kill you. This is the Spooky of the Week film that I think I've enjoyed the least out of everything we've watched. And I include baby, I include Horror in the High Desert 1 in Oof. that list. 
Ugh. because I at least like parts filmed, of dude. horror in the high That's desert one. Filmed, dude. Clint Eastwood's not in that one. <laughs> and it's a better movie for it. Clint Eastwood is as good of an actor as the fucking roommate in Horror in the High Desert You're 1 insane, in dude. this movie. You're I'm insane. not insane. He's playing himself poorly. No, Clint he's Eastwood playing himself. Picked too. a script where he's like, I just want to be Clint Eastwood who's cool and bangs a lot of chicks. That is the funniest part about it to me is that Clint, like, Clint Eastwood was trying to break into directing. <laughs> And uh, he was like, man, I just haven't found the right script. And then, like, there's, like, you can watch, like, stuff where he talks about it. He's like, and that was just the one. It just, and I that, just, that, that one just spoke to me. That one just yeah. spoke to me. Like, I, it's I, where I, Clint Eastwood lives it, in his own house and uh, gets to film in his living room and bangs and I just, hot chicks. I just get to go to my favorite city and, and live there and, and bang hot chicks. And I go to my favorite bar. Yeah, I just I, hang out and, and Oh, and we're just going to film the fucking uh, a jazz festival. Oh, the, what's happening next month? Oh, the fuck? J- well, that's a plot. Well, they he, had, he is they, a fan of jazz. I'm they sure had he is. to show that time was passing in real time. <laughs> <laughs> so what is going to be the opening shots of this movie? Well, Clint Eastwood drives a car. And he keeps driving. He drives all the way up the freeway. You gotta see his route to his work. Dude. You do not. You it's not to. relevant. Well, also, it's from his girlfriend's house. Well, we don't. His do, ex-girlfriend's house. We don't. That is true. So that that stuff is relevant. But then we have the forty-five minutes of him driving, like the real-time drive from his girlfriend's house to the radio station, was unnecessary. I just like the idea of Clint Eastwood finally coming across the script and just being like, Ah, this one's realistic. This one I can do. <laughs> I this can one do. I want to do. I could do this. one. I didn't have a date tonight. I went there because you talk about it on your program sometimes. And I wanted to meet you. So Jessica Walter did a fantastic job in my opinion. She did a great performance. Right. Another reason why I like this movie is Jessica Walter. Is Jessica Walter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that she, she plays my favorite character in my favorite TV show of all time. The mom in Archer? <laughs> no, the mom in the rest of the <laughs> But you're oh, really close. Really close. You know, essentially the same character. <laughs> I've been re-watching Archer, mm-hmm. and so I was like, it's kind of familiar. Like, she reminds me of someone. Whenever she yells, you can tell. And then, yeah, oh. she yells, you can tell. How would you like to tell it to the law? How would you like to go screw yourself? My first note was this movie is slow and boring. And not Hell in a yeah, good dude. way. No, Hell no, yeah, not in a good way. Because a good slow and boring movie builds character and tension. The character is Clint Eastwood. Here's the problem. So, so I, I'm, <laughs> the character is Clint Eastwood. I'm going to lay out the ba- my biggest problem with this movie. That it's supposed to be the psychological thriller, right? Mm-hmm. Where this guy invites this woman into his life who's like a crazy fan. She's clearly a little deranged. We get some snippets of that. And some of those are my favorite parts of the movie. Like mm-hmm. when, they're, when the guy's like, hey, I'm trying to sleep here and then she's like there's people trying to talk here yeah. like that movie that when she, scene just, snaps, that, she just completely the, the scene at the bar where the two guys are like do you need help woman and she just starts screaming at them yeah. and like fuck yeah. off asshole i never once felt concerned for clint eastwood's safety well he's not he's concerned clint either eastwood. yeah well exactly i'm not concerned it's not a thriller <laughs> if the main character that's supposed to be being thrilled is not expressing <laughs> any concern about, about the plot people around him you're worried about because she's harming people around him <laughs> i'm not concerned about them i don't i met them for five seconds the, the only character i genuinely was concerned for in the entire movie because i was invested in this character was the black uh, housekeeper was the maid yeah she was she was fun yeah and i enjoyed her in the two scenes she was in also the mm, music yeah. fucking sucks <laughs> It sounded like stock, it literally sounded like they downloaded it from the YouTube stock library. The music is not great, especially by the end of it. It was like, do you know what the scene is? The person composing this, do you know what this scene is? Well, it's just like random jazz at the end of like, the th- like the thrilling ending. Oh yeah, that like random jazz. It's it's yeah. completely. And then the music cuts out, and then it comes back. It's just like, yeah, it's horribly composed music. It, sure. Every scene is plagued with it. I kept uh, <laughs> s- saying to myself while watching the movie, "Spooky of the week." <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? I kept nodding. Oh, like, spooky of the week. You spooky in- of the week. <laughs> over and in, over again in, throughout the whole movie. In my movie. defense. Th- that was the one thing I didn't calculate, is I thought the movie, I remember the movie being spookier. And when I watched the trailer, I was like, it is like a spooky movie, isn't it? Because it, it came up as horror. For your search yeah, of, well, of top I scariest Clint Eastwood it. movies. So among That's the what? many things I did while watching the movie, uh, like getting up and making myself dinner. Um, and I didn't pause it. Um, you missed per- important scenes. You, he did not, he did not, I promise you. There's like several beach scenes you probably missed. <laughs> Of Clint Eastwood going to the beach and trying to talk to his ex-girlfriend, yeah. 
Yeah, telling his ex-girlfriend he wants her to be one of his several chicks he's banging. No, uh, just I, the one dude. He's she's changed now. I, aside from the fact that I've been banging now. other girls, uh, well, I only want to bang he's you. He's trying to get rid of that girl because hey, she's crazy. Don't you know I'm trying to bang my ex-girlfriend? Oh, I still do want to bang you though. Uh, that is also a really funny aspect of this movie. Is that like he's he is horribly flawed in that regard. Like he just like keeps banging her even though he knows at this point. She's crazy and, See, and if it's that getting flaw worse. was a bigger part of the overall narrative, that would have been interesting. By the end of it, it's not. No. By the end of it, it's uh, not. not it is funny at No, because Clint Eastwood doesn't think it's a flaw. He thinks that it's cool, because that's what he does in his life. He bangs yeah, whoever the it, fuck he wants. This would be crazy if this happened. This <laughs> would be crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's why, when he read it, that's what he was thinking. This oh my god, this could happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a stalker, but it's a goddamn woman. That's insane. I'm gonna do a rewrite with the ending. I'm gonna punch her out a window. <laughs> Off a fucking cliff. <laughs> that part's great. But among with Make Myself Dinner, uh, I also started looking up on IMDb and Letterboxd. So I was like, is this horror? And then they're all like, no. It's a psychological not. thriller. Is like, it's, it's, it was it's a drama thriller. Yeah, drama thriller. Google said it was horror. Boring film is the um, genre I would attribute it to. A lot of, a lot of filler. So I, I, I don't want to hear <laughs> ever again. No, I from, from from Sam Slade. I apologize, Kevin, for for making fun of or or questioning Inside as a Christmas movie last year. I am so fucking sorry because apparently the rules fucking mean nothing, and you can just choose whatever movie you want for spooky. I thought it was spooky. Next time we do found footage films, I'm just gonna choose Rashomon. I, oh, uh, Rashomon's my favorite found footage movie because I found it. Mine's closer to no, a it's movie not. Than Rashomon is to a found footage. I found the footage. <laughs> Sam Slade, you can you, I, I, you have officially given up your right. Of what? To say David Fincher 7 is not horror. Did I ever say that? Because you've said that a lot. Other people can have that opinion. Kevin is going back to a petty <laughs> argument from arguably this is 10 good. years this, ago. See, yeah. I, I was hoping that this would affect you guys. Uh, 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 other people... I was hoping. Other this people... Is real horror. Is they, the, they can have their opinions on, on whether 7's horror or not, but those because those people did not recommend this movie for a 70s horror-themed spooky of the week. Well, you have turned in your card, sir. <laughs> this is Sam Slade's Revenge. Yeah. I do wish we had footage of us watching it, and it's just key. When I was watching it, just cleaning the dishes. Uh, I literally texted our group chat. Just are like, you sure? Are you sure? Is this your final move? Like, because I still, in that time, I was like, I can watch something else. Like, we don't have to do... Oh, I, I, had, I had 20 minutes left when you texted me. <laughs> he was like, what? Well, sure fucking And, and then afterwards, I texted Keegan, because Sam Slade was like, yeah, no, this is the movie we're watching. And I texted Keegan, and I was like, Keegan, I... Cannot do this movie. This might be my least favorite film that we've ever watched. Those pieces. Such he he well, directly what, he directly told me that he liked *Horror in the High Desert* more. <laughs> you know, that you know, what, dude, sucks, dude. You know, maybe that, so does this movie. <laughs> that movie's great, dude. It's got Clint Eastwood. He goes to the beach. Maybe, maybe next year, dude, you'll do an '80s horror theme, and I can bring the King of Comedy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we can just all decide how spooky the King of Comedy is because he can't. You guys are exaggerating how off from a horror movie. <laughs> no, we are not. Watch the trailer, dude. The next scream you hear will be your own. Normally, Spooky of the Week, every year previous, especially with these themes, you know, I, I know I'm going to pick something shitty. I know Keegan's going to pick, it's like 50-50. Keegan sometimes has an interesting pick, but even when it's interesting, it's usually shitty. Kevin will try to pick something interesting or good. Most of the time, I like it less than he wants me to. Sam Slade is usually my saving grace. Sam Slade brought mm -hmm. us Gone. Just, I go uh, from that. Sam Slade brought us. I brought it. My favorite movie that we watched last year, Day that of the one. Beast. So this year, it's so disheartening to open up with like my last savior it has forsaken me. Like you now, you shouldn't I, have picked the movie you picked last year, dude. <laughs> shouldn't pick the Christmas tapes, dude. Now it's an all-out war. We can call a truce, <sighs> and maybe next year you win. Whenever you win. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I'll take it. I think I hate this more no, than you hated anything. This right now. Like, I like your theme next year. I, I you like gotta be careful slow. now. I like basically movies where nothing happens. I'm all about it. Especially when it takes place in the 70s. This movie's very 70s, and it has Clint Eastwood in it. And, and it's this just him hanging This is how frustrating out. talking to him is. is like, <laughs> it, it is that fucking simple. It, it is that simple. No, it is, is that simple. In the 70s, it is literally and Clint Eastwood is in it. Yeah. And he's just like, hey, stop following me around. I noticed uh, pretty early on that all the movies 80 yard, and I, I kind of giggled to myself because I was like, oh, Clint Eastwood just made a bunch of movies well, in Well, yeah, Italy. it's because a lot of it takes place like 
on the beach. Yeah. And it's like they but couldn't then, get any, any good audio. But from then it's just like he was like, well, I'm also in my house. When we're ADRing the rest of the movie, you know, why might not as well? ADR? Might as well ADR this Yeah. Movie. He didn't want to pay a sound guy on set. Either. No. I would not be surprised if it's just like, that's how he basically learned how movie making works in Italy, is that you right. re-record all the dialogue later. It's also probably just easier. You don't have to have a sound guy or worry about perfect sound, you know? I did not super love this movie. <laughs> um, I didn't hate it. Where, what, hey. what is the lowest hey. spooky? Hey. So, so, Kevin, what is currently your lowest spooky of the week? It's so hard because you're ranking them as a spooky of the week. Yes. And if that, if, if that is what I am ranking them as, which is what we are, yeah. uh, then it is at the bottom because it is the, it is <laughs> the, le it is the least spooky of the least week. <laughs> there are worse movies we There have are worse seen. movies we've, we've covered mm -hmm. in spooky of the week. But, but they were horror um, movies. But they, but the, they were spookies of the weeks. <laughs> he has a knife at the end, dude. <laughs> Antrim had that shot of the devil that was kind of spooky. Yeah. 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 It had, it had the, the boy getting... It has a horror premise. Yeah. It has a horror it's premise. Spooky. This is a horror premise. I wouldn't want this happened to me if I was Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> the part when she's staying back at the house and he's leaving and driving away and she's yelling at him the whole time. There's a cut in there that made me laugh out loud. In the shot, she walks up and says, ah, starts screaming at him or whatever. And she says, maybe six or seven words before it cuts to the car already driving away. <laughs> and he just walked past her. We didn't hear the car turn on. You poor It's just, you got to leave me, you can't do this. And I was like, how is he already there? He's fast. He's, that was so fast. That, that I, I cracked up when I saw that. Every time he bumps into a, a, a new woman in the movie, which is about every 10 minutes, <laughs> my thought was, oh man, that woman is so getting banged <laughs> right now. And I wasn't just thinking that because of Clint Eastwood worship. I was like, this movie has has trained me to believe that, that is what it's about. With every time, <laughs> that is what it's about. Like, like it, it, that is the precedent they have set. Even when he's like, oh yeah, I'm here to meet up with the old one. I was like, he is going to fuck the shit out of that old woman. Yeah. I know he is. And then when he did, I was like, oh. mm. it, it, it could have been shorter by quite a bit. I wrote down it could have been 25 minutes, but they definitely could have cut out the jazz festival thing. <laughs> yes. Or the, like you keep either the jazz festival, you can do and a lose time the, lapse the, and the, show the briefly, like, but that's forest it. mingling scene after she gets arrested. She tries to kill herself in his bathroom or whatever. Mm -hmm. right. And he makes plans with his ex-girlfriend. She's like, oh, I, I want to bang right now. And then the other girl is like, ah, oh, Clint Eastwood, ah, oh, come, come. I, ah, oh, ah, oh, it would be a shame if right. I like, ah, oh, I died or something, you know? Girl commits suicide in this jockey's home. It's not very good publicity for a man in your position. Why does he give a fuck? The reason why they didn't take her to the hospital first is uh, that whole question she puts in his head, like, oh, would be like pretty crazy if like, for your career, if this woman almost killed herself in your house. And like the guy that came up to check on her, like kind of agreed and he was like, I'll just not report it because I like you Clint Eastwood. Where it would look weird, it would be like a weird news uh, article kind of thing. Yeah, but I've been watching <laughs> Clint Eastwood this entire movie and he's not given a fuck about anything that's <laughs> happened. And I'm like, why does he give a fuck about this woman making this threat right now? Like he's not giving a fuck about well, anything he, else. And it's just like, I, yeah, I guess I believe that he would give a fuck about that though. The there's thing only, he's doing constantly there's only throughout the movie. two things that Clint Eastwood cares about in this movie. Number one, most importantly, is his job. He's very, very invested in it. And banging his ex-girlfriend. Let's not put ex-girlfriend in there. Let's just sense. say banging women. He And also, I, I read it as he feels responsible. Like, he's like, okay, she's crazy, but now he's kind of like, oh, maybe I did do something wrong. Maybe her really trying to kill herself in my place is partly my responsibility. I, my point is that there all of that scenes. stuff is not super well explained or explored. I just so, understand so Clint as a character more. I, no, I get it. It's just like the stakes don't feel real in the moment. Like me watching it, I'm like, I get on paper why that's happening. I'm not feeling why this is important to this character. Like you needed a, 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 a character actor that could I was gonna really say, pull if I was going to actually criticize the script, it's, it kind of is like, the issue is that it's Clint Eastwood playing it. Yes. It, that's, what I, that's what I'm getting at. The character shouldn't be this like, ultra cool dude. Like yes. Clint Eastwood. Like Clint Eastwood it, has no choice. But I feel, I feel like Clint Eastwood, he, he is such a cool as a cucumber demeanor that I'm like, I, if that happened, he would like let it slide off him. I, I, mm -hmm. I do not believe that Clint Eastwood, upon getting called out by this woman, like or, or like having a woman killed at his house or whatever, uh, by suicide, 
would would it ruin might his life affect in any his way. chances at his job and career, and, and might affect his and <laughs> might affect his chances at getting other women. <laughs> so that's why he cares too. That's what you can put but in your head. But then there goes back to my complaint about his acting. He's not performing that well. Like no, he's just walking. He's hanging out in, in Carmel. Yes. And Monterey. Yes. And and you're just watching it because you're like, I like watching Clint Eastwood. What? What are you looking? Oh, I, I'm just trying to see if I have any more notes. I I'm good. I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I don't recommend this movie. The, there's a couple moments in the movie where Clint Eastwood snaps very snarky remarks to men in positions of power, and I'm like, oh, that's where his strengths are? Why doesn't he do that instead? Yeah. He does later in his career. And that year, he does, because mm-hmm. this is the same year Dirty Harry came out. Oh, my God. It was really very apparent to me, especially towards the end, that Clint Eastwood really does not want this to be a horror movie. <laughs> he does not want to be included <laughs> in this category today. He chooses, because he's the director. Yeah. He chooses the most laid-back, casual, 70s vibe music in between mm-hmm. all the scary yes. scenes. Like, yeah. run, run, run. Bam, 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 bam. And I'm like, bam, bam, is there any bam, rush? Bam, He's literally bam, speeding bam. back. It's a really odd choice for sure, <laughs> especially in the ending scenes. Those knife attack scenes, uh, I- I- in general, I did think were fun. If there was more of them, I might I thought it was hilarious that, that we had that scene. I thought it was a dream for a second. <laughs> Because Same. I had yeah. to watch she, it again. She attacks him with the knife, and it, he's like, oh. And, and then I'm like, did she disappear? Is she a ghost now? What the fuck just happened? She attacked him with a knife. Mm-hmm. He woke, he had dream I, sense or whatever. I checked on Wikipedia, and it said, oh, she escaped. And I was like, it was not a dream? Are you fucking serious? Well, yeah, they show the knife there. Yeah, the knife's still on the pillow. <laughs> the way I interpret it is that it is supposed to, he almost thinks it's a dream until he kind of realizes it's not. Like, it's... Right when he wakes up, he falls to the ground and she's gone. It felt so, like that was one of the most horror-based scenes in the movie. It felt yeah. like weirdly out of place, cause it's like, wait, t- okay, and then she just disappeared. Oh, now it's Clint Eastwood realized the audience might've been falling asleep. He's like, yeah. oh, maybe she comes in and tries to stab me. But she misses, obviously. I, my uh, and, then you, and then everybody else is like, why would she try to stab you? Like the last person in the movie she'd want to stab right now. Yeah, she wants to stab everyone else. She wants to stab everyone else in your life. Yeah. yeah she wants to stab me. She doesn't try to stab you again? She may not have actually like, he might have like, Hazily dreamt the stab almost that happened previously almost. You know what I mean? Like she might have been sneaking around his house and like the timing of it is off. And then once he like realizes she's gone, like it's just too late kind of thing. Okay. That's cool. This kind of leads into what we were saying about not being worried at all about Clint Eastwood's safety uh, once in the movie. Well, um, once he gets there, he just punches <laughs> her out a window too. <laughs> There's a line where Clint Eastwood's ex-girlfriend basically implies that she's like, I'm saying you can't handle or whatever, and and I was like, what are you talking about? I have a modern day reimagining of this movie idea. The whole movie takes place from the perspective of the ex-girlfriend. So the premise is that she has this old flame or whatever, and mm-hmm. she's moving back into her hometown, and she like, no, like maybe she's gotten a call from that guy and being like, oh yeah, I'm a professional DJ, you know, whatever, radio host. And it, the whole plot kind of plays out the same way where she keeps seeing him, but like there's weird things going on and mm-hmm. you think maybe he's a weird creep. But then the plot twist is that he has a stalker that, that kills him like in the climax of the movie and mm-hmm. is like trying to kill her. Yeah. You can have that one for free. Clint Eastwood, you're still alive, make it. You can't have that one for free, that's ours. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright. Copyright. Oh, Copyright. Copyright. Boom. My last note, and this feeds into what you were saying about it being progressive. <laughs> I just said that. Quote, 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 unquote. I, I don't know if I'd say that, but I would say <laughs> for being a drama slash romance focused movie in the early 70s, there is a very noticeable lack of slapping women. Mm. That same Oh yeah, year, there was a bunch of parts where I was like, you got to be careful, lady. Clint was just going to hit you. It was going to hit you for no reason. He's just going to hit you. That same year, Sean Connery was literally drowning swimsuit models at, at, for information as James Bond. <laughs> like the same year. Or Scott you know? I don't know if that's really points for progressivism, but you know, it's, but not it's as like bad it, as it, it, well, in the did, time. It, tell me this. Did you not expect him to hit her a couple times throughout the plot? The, for the, sure. The, like for sure with, yeah. with the vibe yeah. of it. In like the, the 70s first era, I was like, oh. But she was doing the keys She's gonna be thing. careful. I was like, he's going yeah. to slap the ever living shit. Yeah. They like, oh, I still have the keys. And just kicks her out of the car. <laughs> You're crazy, you know that? And yeah. drives away. No, for sure. It could have been worse. That, and, that, and then of course my, all that tension that I was so concerned the whole time was relieved at the end when he punches her in the face <laughs> and she goes over a Wait, ledge. Which I-
I think we all agree. Can list. we all agree that, that is the best horror yes. movie? You know, final thought, and would you recommend it? As a spooky of the week, no, I don't recommend it at all. Um, if you like Clint Eastwood movies and um, your and Sam you Slade, haven't seen the rest of them. and you haven't seen the rest of them, <laughs> and you really want to see movies that he's made Dude, and and has starred in, then yeah, I guess I recommend it. This movie was worse it. than Cry Macho. Fucking don't at me. <laughs> oh, you're insane for that, dude. You are insane for that. Stuff Watch Cry Macho, Macho again. I've Stuff seen Cry Macho. Cry Macho. No, they don't. Name one thing that happened in Cry Macho. <laughs> he has a little friend. <laughs> <laughs> he has a girlfriend in in Cry uh, in, 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 in no. Cry Misty for in, me. In, <laughs> Keegan. Uh, no, I did not like it. Not as a spooky of the week. Not in general. I was hoping the most that Keegan would not like it. I'm always the one that gets hurt the most. I get hurt the most. What, are you, what are you talking about? You hurt me the most last year. <laughs> so Again. as a spooky of the week, it's not very spooky. I can give you all that. I I genuinely remember the movie being spookier. I remember, and then watching the trailer, I was like, yeah, this is like kind of like a spooky vibe movie. It's kind of like, uh, like what like an old timey type of horror movie that's just kind of like nothing really happens, but it's like ah, but that lady's crazy and whatever, you know, like right. something kind of like um whatever happened to Baby Jane. Right. Like I, I kind of remembered it with that sort of vibe. Okay. It's not that spooky. But as a movie, I think it's badass, especially if you like Clint Eastwood movies. <laughs> I was just, I was very happy with myself watching it, just being like, you know what? Finally, we're gonna watch a movie that only I'm gonna enjoy, and everyone else is gonna be like, well, that sucked, because uh, I feel like it's always the other way around. Thank, Thank you right all for watching this candle. first episode of Spooky the Week. You know, it wasn't terribly spooky, but you never know. Next week we could have something spookier. So yeah, tune you know in. What? I, I think it's spookier you're, every week. Maybe you're out of movies to watch that are spooky, and you just want to watch a Clint Eastwood hangout. If movie. we they would, don't, if we watched Mean Streets next week, it would be spookier than this. That's not true. Do you <laughs> if we watched Mean Girls, it would be spookier than this. <laughs>